Hello, I'm Claire Harrison. I work at Guys and St Thomas's in central London. To address the question about whether variations in JAK 2 V617F allele frequency can help predict clinical and survival outcomes in the myeloproliferative neoplasms, several interesting pieces of data are presented at ASH. Um, these are, first of all, an analysis from a, a group of patients with ET and PV specifically treated with ruxolitinib and followed for a long time in the Florence cohort with some data presented by Paola Gugliamelli and Alessandro Venucci showing that those patients who achieved a partial molecular response after a long time of therapy were much less likely to de uh, develop secondary myelofibrosis or so to have a transformation events. So this was a specific correlation which they showed. And I think over 84% of patients who developed secondary myelofibrosis in this cohort did not have a molecular response. The second piece of stronger evidence that is presented at ASH comes from an analysis that we performed in the UK of a five year long study of PV patients randomly uh, allocated either to receive roxolitinib or best available therapy as at least a second line therapy. And here pre-planned molecular analysis was carried out at regular intervals. In this um, data set, we showed that roxolitinib was associated with improved event-free survival, including thrombosis-free survival, and also that attaining a complete response was correlated with these events. But we went further and asked the question about molecular response. In this analysis, we found that achieving a 50% reduction in JAK2 VAF, either at one year or at the latest data point in the study, was associated with better event-free survival. And as we looked for more durable molecular responses at the latest time point, we saw that this correlated with overall survival and progression-free survival, as well as event-free survival and thrombosis-free survival. It's important to put this in the context of other myeloid conditions, however, such as CML and AML. We're not looking at minimal residual disease here. We're looking at actually just a 50% reduction in VAF. But nonetheless, for the first time, this does show um, this in prospective studies um, in the field, therefore potentially pointing the way to how we could target other therapies and effectively monitor patients. However, it is important to remember that basic factors such as achieving a complete response, controlling the blood count, was also a strong influence on event-free survival. In the context of more difficult to treat MPNs such as myelofibrosis, a number of different pieces of evidence have emerged concerning variable reduction in driver VAF. Um, and this relates to, for example, data with Novitaclax and also with the telomerase inhibitor Imetostat, both of which have been published in the last couple of years, suggesting that some reduction in the driver VAF, particularly JAK2, was associated with better outcome. So it feels like we're on the brink of uh, molecular monitoring, at least for some selected patients in the MPN field.